Well, um, yeah, I'm not sure I'm going to do this today. So this is, this is today's lectionary reading from the Revised Common Lectionary, which I normally preach out of the Revised Common Lectionary. It's very good. Uh, this sermon is about Jesus going to meddling in our lives, talking about taking up our cross. And Jesus does meddle in our lives. And um, I just wanted to share my heart with you. Uh, I don't even think I need this, really. Just, uh, I'm not sure how to go, so I'm going to pray. And uh, you, y'all, I've only been here for six months, so you, you don't know me as well as you, as you sh- will get to know me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it is an O-O. And uh, so, but uh, I, I really like order. I'm a, I, I feel very comfortable with order. And scripture says, let's do everything in decency and order. But there are times when the Holy Spirit impresses upon me to change it up. And this was one of those days. In fact, it was this morning on the way coming over here. Um, There's, yeah, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I thank you for this moment. Lord, help me to communicate what I believe you've been stirring in me as I've been sitting in your presence and seeking your face very diligently for a long time now. And Father, I, I believe this is a special day in all of our lives and in the life of this particular congregation. And I believe you're going to set things in motion today in in many of our lives for those who are willing and open and believe that will be amazing. Healing, transformative, delivering, empowering, changing into the likeness of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So uh, this morning I was driving in and I was listening to a radio station that had a sermon on it. And the sermon was out of the book of Philemon. And this pastor was, was eloquent, learned. Uh, he was a pastor of a, of a well-known denominational church. And he was preaching in such a way where he literally twisted the scriptures much like Satan did in the Garden of Eden. Where, where Satan uses God's word and then twists it just enough to make it work for him and against God. It's exactly what this guy did this morning. And I said to myself, Lord, what makes those who proclaim your word in honesty and integrity and try to uphold your scripture, what makes, what makes them different from him? How can we differentiate you know, people today? How, how can the sheep know who they're who their shepherd is, their great high priest, as it were. And I felt like the Lord just was very clear, and he said, Jeff, the difference is power. Yeah? The difference is power. You see, the apostle Paul, when he went and preached, he he said, look, don't, don't listen to my words because they aren't very eloquent. I'm not very sharp in how I speak. You you, you can't look at my, my learning, per se, although he was a learned man, I, I want you to put your faith and your hope and your trust not in what I'm able to do, but on what the power of the Spirit is able to do. The demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and the church has become very anemic and it is beginning to shrink back and we've, we've adopted methodologies of, of the world. We, we've looked at the, the marketing and the strategies and, the, and all the different ways we grow businesses and we, we grow different industries and we've adapted them and say, if we just apply these to the church, then we can grow the church. And the church has become very successful at this. It's kind of like Home Depot found the big box store being the great way to do the box store and everybody followed suit, Best Buy, Lowe's, so on and so forth. They found something that worked, that people wanted. And what happened as a result of that is the Ace Hardwares and stuff are, are dying and drying up mom and pop hardware stores. Well, the same things happen a lot in the churches, folks. The big box church has found a way to attract as many people with, with lights, cameras, and action and, and, and good motivational speaking, entertainment and, and motivational speaking a lot of times. And there's really no demands of discipleship or expectation for God to move in any sort of way. In fact, get them out in 55 minutes because what we've learned is people can't stand being in church longer than that, so go. See, there's a wonder why 
there's, whether you like this person or not, and I'm not going to even make a judgment because it's not my place to do, but, but one of the great uh, large church people, Rick Warren, made a statement. He said that the church is more accessible and visible in America than ever before. You can go to five FM radio. I found another FM radio station with Christian music on it. Unbelie- here in Atlanta. Right? There was a day when there was zero. There, there are satellite TVs there, uh, of Christian. There's, there used to be just TBN. Now there's Daystar and ETWN or whatever they all call it. There's a billion ways to watch Christian television. And in the process of Christian entertainment, Christian television, Christian radio, Christian programs, and, and, and I'm not against these things, but when it drowns out prayer and fasting and believing God to do great and amazing things, there's a problem. Right? We, we've learned the ways of the world, and we have applied it to the church, and we wonder why there's so little result. Do you understand? Uh, 2008, I, had a, I, I have three, three dreams in my life that I consider from the Lord. I've been walking with the Lord since 1991, so that's 28 years. Three dreams in 28 years. I'm not one of these people that's given to dreams or, or visions or anything like that. I've had one vision... And three dreams that I consider being from the Lord. The one dream that I had from the Lord was in 2008. And I was living up in uh, Big Canoe. And I had this dream where, where I, I, this kid I led to Christ when I was a youth pastor, he kind of got weird spiritually. I don't want to say weird. He was just all Holy Ghost, right? I mean, he was just, everything was a Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. And, and I was, at this time in my life, just all about the Word. It's all about the Word. You know, all about, and it is. <laughs> it's all about the Word. And in the dream, this, he, he, actually this kid was doing landscape architecture in China, and, um, and he was going down these stairs, right? And as he went down the stairs, I was chasing after him to try to correct him, like, dude, you're going to get fired if you keep this weird Holy Spirit stuff up, man. Stop it. And I was chasing him. He kept on running from me. And then all of a sudden, when, when he got to the bottom of these stairs, he, he, he kind of got down on his knee like this. And he was just waiting for me. And I was running to catch him. I was like, oh, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. And I tripped over him, but he grabbed me. And he held on to me. And in that dream, all of space and time and reality just immediately boom, just came to just bent towards us. Like, you ever see Star Wars when light speed happens? That, a thousand times over, and colors and, and magnificence was going on in my, in my dream. And the, I felt the power of God in such an incredible, powerful way. And I remember, I remember waking up from that dream when I did. I went, <gasps> I mean, I, I don't know why I did that. I just did it. It hurt my lungs. I don't know if you've ever, I was done scuba diving before, and they teach you how to clear your regulator and then <clears throat> suck it back in. That's how it felt. It literally hurt, and I said, Lord, what does this mean? First thing I asked, is this from you? What does it mean? And as clear as a bell, the Spirit said, Jeff, when the Word and the Spirit come together, then all of the power of God is released. Right? Okay, so, so, so listen now. I was like, Lord, confirm that. What are you talking about? He said, Jeff. He said, when the Spirit of the Lord was hovering above the void of the earth, it was waiting for God to speak His Word. And when God spoke his word and it hit the spirit, all of creation happened, right? And the Lord said, let there be light. And there was light. So Jeff, when the, when the church was formed on the day of Pentecost, they were up in the upper room and they were praying and seeking the Lord. The word of God, Jesus, told them to go and wait upon the spirit of the Lord. So there's the word and the spirit. And the spirit came with the word and and the church was created as Peter proclaimed the word and the power of the Holy Spirit. You see. And a lot of churches are are, are, are all Holy Spirit, right? Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Woo, 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 woo. I've been there. I've done it all, guys. (laughs) There's not one thing that I haven't experienced. Well, there might be some things you probably could tell me. I, I don't want to know. The, the, second, the second thing is, is too, is, is I was, I'm, I'm big, if you know me, I'm big into theology, right? I love God's word. I memorize God's word. I feast on God's word. But there's other churches, it's like, it's, it's like there's no Holy Spirit. 
It's like, you know, they think this is the Holy Spirit. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Bible. As if the Holy Spirit doesn't exist. It's some imperceptible force. But I'll tell you something about the Holy Spirit, folks. The Holy Spirit can be grieved, and the Holy Spirit can be quenched. If you've ever grieved somebody, you've experienced that, haven't you? If I grieve my wife, I know it. If I quench my, quench, uh, my children's spirit, I, I see it. And God feels that too, by the way. The Holy Spirit's a person. And you can get, the Bible talks about getting drunk on wine, right? You've heard that before, right? The analogy, the analogy of being filled with the Spirit is being drunk on wine. I, I promise you, if you were drunk, I'd be able to tell. And if we're Spirit-filled, the world should be able to tell too. You, you understand? And God's looking for people who will be full of His Spirit and, 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 and open to His Spirit and true to his word. See, this scripture, Jesus says, you diligently study these scriptures because you think that by these you have eternal life. But these are scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have eternal life. See, these scriptures speak to God. They tell us who God is, but they are not God. Do, do you understand? And, and we, we learn about what God can do. And, you know, interesting enough, what does it say in the scripture about what God can do? Jesus makes a powerful statement. I, I didn't say it. Jesus talks about his church, his followers, those who love him, those who serve him. He talks about it in John chapter 14, verse 12. I didn't say this. I didn't make this up. I tell you the truth. Here's Jesus. Notice how he has to start it off by saying, I tell you the truth. In other words, you might not believe what I'm about to say, right? Okay, so I'm going to let you know Jesus might be saying to you and to me today, it's going to be tough for you to believe what I'm about to say. I tell you the truth. Anyone, does it say the apostles? Does it say only those people who saw Jesus walk in the flesh? Does it say only pastors or people like that? What does it say? Anyone. Are you anyone? Yes. All right. Listen to what it says. Anyone, that includes you and me, who has faith in me. Notice not faith in faith. It's not faith in themselves, but faith in Jesus. It's not just intellectual assent. It is a literal faith and belief that Jesus can and will do, right? Faith me will do what I've been doing. Say what, Jesus? You're gonna, we can do the things that you do? I'm not, this is the scriptures. I'm not making this up. I'm reading it right out of this Bible, right here, red letter and everything, all right? Anyone who has faith in me will do what I've been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father, right? He, he went to the Father. Why did Jesus ascend into heaven? He, he brought his wounds. His, he, Jesus is scarred for, for eternity. You know this, don't you? <laughs> Hands, feet, brow, side. And he sat before the Father in heaven. And the Father in he sits at the right hand of the Father in intercession for his church, Right? In other words, he is before this. So when the father looks down upon the church, he looks through the wounds of Jesus. Do you understand the point? And as he looks through the wounds of Jesus, he sees a purified church. And that's how he sent forth his Holy Spirit, right? The whole, why, what was the purpose of Jesus? Not to get us into heaven. That's part of it. But to get heaven into you and me. And let that be a part of our lives on this earth. But, but, but why, do, why, listen to me, and this is so important, why, why do we lack it so much? Why? We, we're not hungry. We're not thirsty. L listen, we have, as Americans and Westerners, uh, when I was in seminary, I'll never forget hanging out with some African brothers and Indian, and Indian brothers from India. And they looked at me and they said, brother, it is so hard to be a Christian in your nation. And I said, what are you talking about? You have so much food. You have so much entertainment. You have so much. And, and, and you, you, you don't need God here. You, get, if you, you don't need God. 
And one, one brother, literally, his bishop called and, and said, told him, hey, uh, I'm t- they used to check in every week. You need to fast and pray. I can tell you're losing your spiritual vigor. Can you imagine your pastor or bishop calling him and say, hey, Mark, you need to fast, brother. Because <laughs> you're losing. Your- but, but, but my point is, my point is, is that they, they just said it's very difficult. And look, we, we've got these little devices we have in our pockets, and we're constantly on them. Enter- have you walked around before? We're entertained. Entertain me. Entertain me. Make me laugh. Make me giggle. I, I don't care about God. Just make sure that I anesthetize myself towards this lost and dying world so I can just make it through another day. Help me get through the day so I can get that glass of wine and just be done with this thing. That's not the type of church Jesus wants. What's a church that's hungry and thirsty for him? He's, listen to me, he's the only thing that's ever going to satisfy the deepest longings of your soul. Church, I'm, I'm, I don't, I, I can't be a pastor anywhere that just wants to do things man's way. Aren't you tired of man's way? I am. I've made mistakes of not pressing into what God has before, and I don't want to do that again. Because the pain of missing God is oh so painful. But he's so good because he disciplines those whom he loves and chastises those whom he receives as sons and daughters. And if you've been disciplined in your life, give him praise and glory because you're a child of God because he doesn't want second best for you. He wants best for you and what's best for you is Jesus. He is the treasure of the kingdom of heaven. He makes a promise. Listen now, this is so important. This is so important, okay? God is looking for a holy church. God is looking for a church that says, I don't want the trash and the trinkets of the world anymore. I want the treasures of Christ. I, I want to have an appetite for God. And, and I, if you haven't been eating God, and if you haven't been drinking God uh, on a consistent basis, you're, you're, you're like an anemic, starved child. And I can't give you a steak to eat today because it will make you sick. But you can at least start eating small grains of life, rice, so that you can get life back in your body again. And I want to teach and train you how to do that, how to seek God in little bits and pieces. But if, if, you, if you're not going to make a commitment, when, 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 if I teach these classes and stuff like that, then you're not going to learn. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have to make a commitment in your life. Just like if you're going to work out or if you're going to diet, your spiritual life is far more important than what you're eating. It's far more important than how much you exercise. It's far more important than how much you spend time trying to, to, to be better at your job or whatever or make more money. It's far more important than those things. How much time are you developing in your spiritual life? Seriously. We, we wonder why God's not at work. But if you read the Bible, the church is a praying church. It's a prevailing church because it's a, prevail, it's a praying church. Amen? Amen? So to open up my story a little bit more, uh, I was at a church in North Georgia. I was tired of doing church. And um, this guy named Charles Carin, he's an interesting fellow, would show up at my church and he gave me a book. And I just put it out. It was like, oh, nice to meet you, old guy. Shake your hand. Go in peace. Good luck. Take his book, put it on my shelf. Forget about it. One day I was passing by my bookshelf and I saw it and I grabbed it. Because a guy named, by the name of R.T. Kendall, uh, his name was on it. And R.T. Kendall used to pastor Westminster Chapel and was a regular speaker at the Church of the Apostles in Atlanta, Georgia, where I was on staff, as you all know. And I heard him speak. And I read the book, and guess what it was called? Word, Spirit, and Power. Yeah. And R.T. wrote about the Word, and a guy named Jack Taylor wrote about the Spirit, and Charles wrote about Power. And I understand the word and the spirit, but I had trouble understanding the power part of the Holy Spirit. So I read it, and I felt the Spirit of God said, call Charles up on the phone. So I called him up on the phone. He lives down in West Palm Beach. And I was like, hey, I uh, read your book. He's like, oh, great. Did you enjoy it? I'm like, yeah, I did. I said, he said, well, you know, we talked for a while, and I said, I feel like God wants me to come see you. And, of course, that's got to be weird, right? <laughs> But he said, well, come on down. And I went down and uh, spent some time with him. And um, 
Yeah. The spirit, this, this, the, the, I, what, I, what I went down there for, and I felt like the Holy Spirit told me to go down there for. By the way, did you know, yeah, the caller, I'm an Anglican priest, if you didn't know that, for people. Anglicans love the Holy Spirit. Did you know that? <laughs> Just to let you know, in, in, in our denomination, we, we, are, we love the Holy Spirit. I realize this is a multi-denominational church, but you have an Anglican pastor, okay? <laughs> All right. I went down there, and the Spirit wanted me to ask him for a double portion of the anointing that he had, Elijah, Elisha, right? And I told him that. And guess what? I spent three days there, and he didn't pray for me to have the double portion of the, the anointing. I was so disappointed. But two years later, before I was to take a parish down in South Carolina, we were driving in the hills of North Georgia, and without me asking him, he said, I just want to pray for you. And he laid his hands on me, and he said, I pray that you receive a double portion of the anointing the Spirit has given me. And my, my, after that prayer, my wife went to hell in a handbasket. Sorry, did I, I? It really did. It went terribly, terribly for, the, for two years. But, but here's what I know. I know God wants to, to move in his church. And there'll be days in this, in this sanctuary where we'll have a normal service. And there'll be days like today when we're going to open up the sanctuary and say, hey, the Spirit's here. And we can pray for people. See, here's what the Bible says. If you're hungry and thirsty for righteousness, you will be satisfied. And if you're, if you're not satisfied right now, it's time to hunger and thirst for righteousness. The scripture also says this. Listen, Jesus said, if you're thirsty, come to me and drink. So here's what I'm going to do. And thank you for listening to me. I'm going to just, for those who want to stay, I'm going to pray for every person who wants prayer and see what the Spirit does. I'm, I, I, I sense his anointing like a fountain coming out of me today. Okay? And I'm thankful for it. And, and sometimes I hold on to that, but I feel like God wants me to give that away. If I love y'all. And if you have, like, somewhere to go or something to do, we are, you know, the service is just, it's, you can go. But just go very quietly and, and let this become a house of prayer. Okay? And um, if, 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 I, if I, here's what I believe. There's a lot of internal, a lot of us have external illnesses, right? Things that are external, you know, diseases and illness. But some of us have psychological illnesses. And I do believe there's a special anointing today to deal particularly with those illnesses of the heart and the physical ones, but the ones of the heart. Pornography addiction, um, addiction to, to addictions to, to drugs and alcohol, um, a, um, a sense of shame, fear, anxiety, uh, those deep issues. Those wounds that we get from childhood and growing up and that, that, that have crippled us as a result. I believe there's anointing to heal those in particular. Unforgiveness, bitterness, unbelief. And so um, I'm going to pray for people that want to be set free and healed and delivered and if you're going to stay in the sanctuary, stay in an attitude of prayer. And if you need to go home, I love you. Mm -hmm. Just please do so very quietly so we can keep in that attitude. Amen? Amen? Amen. So anybody who wants prayer, you can come up and just line up here. Or it might be two or three people. But I'm not going to do a benediction because the service isn't over. <laughs> but if you need to go, it's okay. All right? Is that, is that cool? All right. All right, um, I asked a good friend of mine, Chris Coriel, where are you, Chris, to, to help me pray. Um, and you might all of a sudden feel led in the sanctuary, like as you're sitting here, I need to go pray for this person, or I need to go pray for that person. It doesn't just have to be me praying, but I, I, you see what I'm saying? I know some of you are like, should I go? Should I go? It's okay. I love you. You're not less spiritual if you end up, you're not, I promise. But if you want prayer for those things, great.